This is an overview of the unlimited timeline widget by unlimited elements for Elementor. Let's get started. To get started, we're going to want to make sure that we have unlimited elements, a plugin for Elementor installed on our WordPress website. If we don't have it installed, you can jump into plugins, add new, and search for unlimited elements. It's a free tool that you can use and download and get some awesome widgets. The widget we're going to use today is in the marketing widgets category. So I'm just going to click marketing widgets and I'm going to hover over the widget unlimited timeline and click install. The widget has been installed from the cloud and now we can create a new page in our WordPress website and start configuring the widget. So I'm gonna call my page unlimited timeline and click edit with Elementor. Once our page is open for editing, I can search in the widgets pane for the word timeline. And over here we can see our unlimited timeline. I'm going to drag that inside over here and we can start editing and customizing it. One step before starting editing, I'm just gonna jump into the section settings and over here under content width, I can play around with the width just so it won't be so wide. Click on the widget for editing and I'm going to take you over all the steps and all the customization options so you can make the style and the look and feel of this widget exactly for your website needs. The first setting is for alternating. So over here, let's see what happens when we turn that off. You can see that the sort of alternating layout has been turned off and all the bullets are aligned to one side. If I change the direction to right to left, you will be able to see that the bullets are aligned to the right. So you can have all sorts of layouts with this. I'm just gonna go back to the defaults because I think those look pretty good. The next setting is for a responsive breakpoint. This is in case that you want the list to collapse like we saw before when we turned off alternating. So if the device is not uh, wide enough, then we can make the uh, settings collapse. So let's go into responsive mode and you can see that now it's not alternating anymore. And this is because this is set to 768 and the red screen resolution over here is less than 6768. Let's go back to desktop and over here we have an option to hide last item line. This is the line that's supposed to show over here and you can see that it's on by default. If I turn that off, you can see that there is a line. So that's sort of a design decision and you can decide whatever you want. I like it to be turned off. Jumping into layout, now over here we have some very interesting settings. First one is just for turning on or off the title. The next one is actually for putting the subtitle wherever you would decide to place it. So we can decide to place it before the title, after the title, or after the text. So that's pretty, let's say, flexible. And I'm just gonna turn that back off show text to turn off or on the text and show pointer this is the pointer over here that's the one that points to the bullet or to the icon so i can just decide to turn that off and we have also an option to add an image so over here you can see how that looks with an image inside let's jump into items and see how we can manage our items so of course this is the regular elementor repeater we can decide to delete certain items, duplicate certain items, add a new item, or click to edit an item. We can input our text, title, subtitle, text. Let's add a different image. So let's go into upload files. I'm gonna select some awesome images. I uploaded over here and click on insert. So see how nicely that adapts and it will adapt to any uh, size configuration we input later on for the image itself. 
Over here we can change the icon. It supports, of course, custom SVGs. And you can change the type of the icon. So let's see what types we have over here. We have an option to put text inside instead of an icon. We have an option to leave it empty or we can upload a custom image which is not an SVG. So this is pretty flexible. Uh, let's just show an example how it looks with text. So you can see there are three different lines of text. You can change each one of those, which is pretty awesome. And uh, let's see how it looks for image. So that's just a re regular image that you can put inside of over here. And you can leave it empty if you decide to leave it empty. Of course, we will make it smaller later on if it's empty, but you can do that as well. So very flexible. We thought of everything. So next setting is let's turn back on the icon, I think, and let's show the show overrides part. So overrides, we have an option to override the background color of the content area. So if you want each item to have a different background color, you can do that as well. I'm just going to leave that empty. And uh, we can also override the pointer color. So if we want this whole card to look uh, red, we can do that, including the pointer itself. Awesome. So I think we went over everything over here. Just going to jump into style. And the first setting is for icon size. This is the outer icon. It's not the icon itself. It's the round circle around it. So we can make that smaller or bigger. Change the background color. And we have an option to change the active color. So if I'm going to change the active color to blue, once I start scrolling down, each time the active line reaches the icon, it will turn on to a different color. Really, really awesome. And you can also change the icon itself if you want to, if you need to. So you have icon color and active icon color. And over here we have the inner icon size. So you can make that bigger or smaller. And depending on your design, we can decide to add radius. So by default, there is a radius for the icons. I can just push that up a little bit. And now we have like sort of a rounded square, which also looks awesome. And we have an option for border. So you can add a border. Let's just see how that looks with solid two pixel. And let's say give it a black border. Awesome. Over here we have the next option is for icon shadow. We can add some shadows to our icons and offset top. Now this is really important. Sometimes you don't want your icons to be aligned to the top and you're going to want to push them down. So now you can do that. Ultimate flexibility. That's the reason we call this unlimited timeline. The next setting is for the text typography. Now this is uh, only if you decide to put text inside of your icon. So we uh, made it possible to make different types of layouts by giving you an option to add three types of text and determining the different typography for each text. Let's jump into content. Inside of content, we have space between items. So this is the space over here between the items. Right now, the default is 30. But if you want some more space between the items, you can add that over here. Content background to the background behind the content. I'm not going to change that right now. And content padding, which is really important. If you want more or less padding, you can play around with the padding. I'll just make that 30 for example purposes and jump into the pointer. The pointer has its own settings and you can change it to a different color if you want to. For example, if you want the pointer to be black and then add a border over the content area and just so uh, they look consistent, then that can maybe look awesome. And we have an option to change the width of the pointer, the height of the pointer, the pointer uh, spacing. That's a space between the pointer and the icon and the vertical position, which is really important when you want to align your pointer with the icon itself. So really, really flexible, starting to look good. Let's just add maybe some border for our content area. So that looks consistent with our pointer. 
I think that looks good. And I think we're about done. We can add some radius over here just to make it rounded like we made our icons earlier. Awesome. Line. So over here, this is really, really simple. We just have an option to make our line wider uh, or not. And we have an option for the color and the active color. So you can see that our line is getting filled up as we scroll vertically down our page and we can decide to change the fill color. If you do not want to fill color, as it says over here, you can just leave this empty by clicking over here, clear, and then you don't have a fill. But the fill is really awesome. I don't see why anyone would want to turn that off. Next part is for image. Now over here we have a lot of interesting stuff and we have an option for image width. If you want to make the width less wide, image height, if you want to play around with that. Radius, let's make our image rounded as well, like we made our content, just so it looks consistent. We can push down or up the opacity. And a really, really cool option that we've added lately is for force image as a background. So if you want your image to act as a background for this whole section over here, you can just turn that on. And now you can see that the text is on top of our image. Now, in this case, that's why we added the opacity that I played with earlier. And we have an option also for uh, blend modes, which also helps the background and image blend together. So now what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, make this look good. <laughs> so let's add another two images over here for our other items. So we have some images already set up looking good let's scroll down add another image and look how easy and fast and how good this looks i mean it can't be simpler than that right so next thing i'm going to do is actually i'm going to change my text to white so jump back into style and over here we can make our text white maybe you'll want your titles to be bolder so they're more prominent and we can even add some shadows so it will jump above the image a little bit let's go into text make this white as well and i think we're about set let's turn on the text shadow as well and the next thing i'm going to do is go into content let's make our content background black and go into image set it to normal and now we can play around with the opacity until we think it looks good and we're all set to go i hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and awesome subscribe for more tutorials like this and i'll see you in the next video